What is going on? The DFS OGs are back in the house. Week one is here. The phones are blowing up. We are ready to talk some football here. We had our kind of our preseason, you know, our, our warm up pod last week. So hopefully you guys had a chance to join us for that. Gave away some futures, team totals, things we like there. So if you didn't catch that episode, go back and check that out. But we are here. Football is here, and we have a new sponsor of the show as well. The show will be sponsored by BetMGM this season. And guess what? Got a promo code for you guys as well. Promo code GRINDERS gets you a risk-free bet up to $1,000. Terms and conditions apply. And as always, bet responsibly here with BetMGM. Glad to have them as a part of the show this season. And obviously glad to have my boys as part of the show as well. I'm excited. Football's here. We're going to talk each and every game. Some of our favorite bets. We're also going to give you our best bets. Each of us are going to pick out five bets here on the slate and give those away. We're also going to give you a survivor pick. You know, a lot of people out there in survivor pools. So we're each going to nominate one team each week uh, to give you our favorite survivor plays. But I babbled long enough. As you can tell, I'm excited. Christmas is here. Football's here. Let me get to my guys, Head Chopper and Notorious. Chop, we'll start with you, buddy. Football in full swing. College football couple weeks in the books already how's it been so far excited for week one super super excited for week one um yeah last week in college was fun i actually went to the uh alamo dome caught houston versus utsa all right a little triple overtime not a bad way to spend your money on a ticket right there sir <laughs> so that was fun and uh yeah, I'm just, I'm anxious, man. Now now we're here, and so it's going to be a blast. We got a sponsor, one where we can like really dig into their content, you know, and and, and what they do. So I'm super stoked about everything, and just happy to be back. I can't believe they keep on inviting us back for another year, man. I know, you know, it feels like we've been on the franchise tag here for a few years. I thought you're only supposed to get a year or two, but hey the people demand the ogs we're back we're here to uh to serve you guys and give you some of our thoughts uh each and every week but man what a what a college weekend chop i mean you had that game that north carolina game i mean scores in the 60s uh, the lsu florida state game was insane if you didn't catch that one so it, it just wets the whistle you know the, the king of the mountain coming up here uh nfl season what a game we get to kick it off uh, with the bills and the rams we'll start with that one here momentarily but let me get uh, to my other boy here, fellow OG, Notorious. How we doing, brother? Yeah, doing good. Uh, I always uh, say I'm a college football fan until the Utes lose, and they uh, lost to Florida, so uh, I can focus all of my attention uh, on the NFL now. But, yeah, I mean, good week of college football just to get uh, you know the juices flowing a little bit. And, uh, yeah, super excited for NFL. Yep, can't wait, no doubt. So we will we will attack things more from a betting perspective. We'll kind of naturally talk about, you know, the, the games and guys we like. So plenty of DFS content over at rotogrinders.com, uh, stuff covering the, the opening game, the opening weekend, all the different slates, uh, lineup HQ if you're not using that, ownership projections, uh, just ton of information there. Build lineups literally in seconds. One lineup, 300 lineups. Uh, you can get it done. Also, make sure you check out scoresandodds.com. That's the page uh, that we will be using here on the show. So ability to compare odds. We're going to focus on BetMGM, our great sponsor here. Uh, but you can also look at some of the other odds across all the different sports books here. Uh, picks, all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, make sure you check that out as well, scoresandodds.com. All right, guys, let's get into it Thursday night. Uh, what a game here. Buffalo and the Rams will get the latest lines here. For you on this game, looks like Buffalo minus two here. It's come down a little. It actually opened minus one, so jumped up to two and a half. Still some two and a halfs out there. Bet MGM sitting at a two here, minus 115 in favor of Buffalo. Total at 52. So, Derek, we'll start with you. I mean, we got the defending champs at home as underdogs uh, to this Buffalo team who pretty much everybody, everything I've seen, Super Bowl pick, Buffalo versus insert NFC team. Buffalo versus, you know, it's it, it's everybody is on Buffalo. They are the betting favorites here. Do they start out one and zero? Do they go to LA and get a win? How do you see this game playing out? I cannot wait for this game. Big total here. Superstars all over the field. What do you got here for Bills and Rams? Yeah, Thursday night football usually something you just have on in the background, but uh, this will be on the forefront. Can't wait for this one. Um, I mean, if it wasn't a Thursday night football game, I probably wouldn't be betting on it, but. It's like, it's like we have to. First game of the year. 
Uh, I'm going to take the Bills. I know they don't have Tredavious White. Um, I know they're on the road, uh, road favorites, you know, in the NFL. Uh, always a little bit risky, but I just think they're uh, they're destined for a big season. Um, you know, they probably should have advanced uh, to the title game last year, but they couldn't stop Patrick Mahomes. So uh, I think they're going to be better. Uh, brought in Vaughn Miller. I think that's certainly going to help. And with the Rams, I'm just a little concerned uh, about Stafford's arm. You know, it might not be anything, but um, it might be something. So for me, I'm taking the Bills, but I don't have strong, you know, conviction in it. I got some strong conviction here. I love the Bills uh, in this spot. You know, I, I, I respect the hell out of the Rams, no doubt. But we have a lot of questions uh, with this team. You know, we heard a lot about Matthew Stafford and his elbow. You, know, you got the running back situation. Is, is it Akers? Is it... Is it Henderson? We're, we're hearing word about Kyron Williams. How healthy are they back there? And, guys, I just think this Buffalo team going to be very similar to what we saw, say, back in when New England was just trucking everybody. I think that's going to be Buffalo, strong on both sides of the ball. Josh Allen is going to have a massive year. So uh, this is one of my best bets. Going to go out here on a limb, first game. I am hammering the Buffalo Bills uh, in this one. It feels like the books are begging you to take the Rams. Like, how could the Super Bowl champs, Possibly be underdogs at home here. I'm not buying it. I'm going with Buffalo here. So, Chop, lock me in uh, for Buffalo. One of my best bets here to lead us off. Are you with me? Are you going with the underdog at home? Thoughts here on opening night, Buffalo and the Rams. Yeah, I, I lean more towards Derek's side here. I don't have as strong of a, an opinion as you, but I'm with you guys. Like, I'm a little bit disappointed both of you guys said Buffalo because the thesis of my pick was <laughs> – that Vegas wants everybody to take the Rams here. Yep. So I'm going to switch up, switch it up and go Bills. And then, of course, you guys come and say the Bills anyway. But, uh, yeah, uh, the Rams at home as almost a field goal underdog. It feels like they're just begging you to take uh, the Rams here. But, yeah, I'm going Bills. I think the road thing kind of gets uh, – some of that gets nullified. It's the first game of the year. You didn't have to travel. Mid Mid-season travel is the tough stuff, you know, coast to coast. They've had a chance. If they wanted to fly down two weeks ago, they could have been relaxing in L.A. two weeks ago for all we know. Like, So I don't think the travel matters as much. Uh, you get all this time to prepare. I think the Bills are probably the slightly better team right now. Yeah, I like the Bills. I'm not going to hammer it like you, but I'm with you guys. I think, I think the Bills end up walking in here and taking this win right here. All right, sounds like a clean, clean sweep uh, on Buffalo uh, for us here. So uh, let's move on to Sunday. Let's go with the Baltimore Ravens traveling to New York to take on the Jets. Uh, obviously, uh, the contract situation with Lamar Jackson. Uh, today is the deadline, apparently. I don't know that anything gets done here, Chop, but I think this is going to motivate this guy. I, I think you're going to see MVP-level Lamar Jackson. I absolutely love him in week one if you're talking DFS. You don't necessarily have to pair him up with somebody, but you do have Andrews. You have Bateman, who I think takes a step here. And the Jets, there's some excitement. They did well in the draft, no doubt. I don't know that they're ready to compete with a team like the Baltimore Ravens here. So thoughts here, minus seven here at BetMGM on the Ravens. That total sitting at 44 and a half. Uh, thoughts, Chop? Well, what are we doing with the Ravens? Oh, man. Yeah, I think I – think, uh... Playing for the biggest contract of your life has a way of motivating a guy. So I think we are going to see like prime Lamar this year. He's going to be awesome. And this is a this is a decent enough game to start off with. The Jets defense shouldn't be that resistant. Flacco will be starting at quarterback. I actually don't know that that's that big of a downgrade from Zach Wilson to be perfectly honest. But uh, either way, I think the Ravens are the better team. Like I've seen a lot of stats being thrown out there from guys about how the Raven the Ravens uh pass defense last year how poor it was but uh, like the, you you throw all that out the window they're they're fresh they're healthy this year they're going to be good this defense is going to be good it's going to be back on point i think lamar crushes i like the ravens here and you know, we're getting you know we don't have you know if you threw in that extra half a point i'd be leery but it's a touchdown i think we i think we can cover the touchdown here i like baltimore now it is minus uh, 115 here on that seven at BetMGM. So if you're new to betting, you start seeing that number go up a little bit. The next move when it gets to about minus 120 is that line to go to seven and a half. So if you like it, you bet it, you'd get it in at seven, even at minus 115. Uh, it has gone up, started at four and a half. So it's made quite the jump uh, up to seven here. So 
I'm with you, though, Chop. I, I think Baltimore is just too talented here. Well, yes, there's questions on that defense. I'm not worried about Joe Flacco. I'm hearing this Joe Flacco revenge game, uh, all this nonsense, going to use him in DFS. I do like Elijah Moore uh, as a cheap play who's played well with Flacco. But, Derek, your thoughts here. It just seems like a classic mismatch. Does Baltimore cover the seven? Man, if you're using Joe Flacco and DFS, uh, send me your head-to-heads. Yeah, uh, I'll take those right now. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, I think Flacco is probably uh, better to cover the spread than uh, Wilson would be. I think Wilson probably gives him a better chance to win this game. But, you know, Flacco probably fewer turnovers, fewer mistakes. But, yeah, I'm with you guys. I'm taking the Ravens. I know the running backs are, you know, banged up. We don't know if Dobbins is going to play. Um, the receivers, you know, likely might be their second-best uh, wide receiver, um, even though he's a tight end. So, uh, I worry a little bit, but hey, you guys mentioned it. Lamar Jackson probably not going to have the contract figured out. Going to be motivated. The secondary is a lot more healthy this year, so yeah, uh, we're going to disagree eventually. But give me Baltimore. Uh, one of the features I really like here on Scores and Odds, and you can see it on the screen, it, it gives you a percentage of the bets and the money coming in. And sometimes you'll see discrepancies, and, and that can be handy. Eighty-six uh, percent of the bets right now coming in uh, on the Baltimore Ravens. So. Looks like the public is with us. Not that we always want to be with the public. In fact, I'd rather be on the other side of the majority of the time uh, from the public. But I think it makes sense uh, here in this one on the Baltimore Ravens. All right, let's go to our next game, New Orleans and Atlanta. This thing opened up Saints minus three and a half. It's all the way up to five and a half here at BetMGM. The total sitting at 42 and a half. So, Derek, we'll stay with you. We talked a lot about the Saints uh, in our our preseason primer, I think we all felt like that that win total for New Orleans was a little deflated. I mean, they, they feel like one of the better teams potentially in the NFC. I know Jameis Winston, a big question mark, but Alvin Kamara looks like he's going to avoid suspension here. You bring in Olave, you bring in Jarvis Landry, you potentially get Michael Thomas back. He is questionable. And you're facing a team that's led by Marcus Mariota. So, uh, Derek, this spread has gone up. Has it gone up high enough? Are you jumping on the Atlanta side here? What do you got, Saints and Falcons? Well, I can't uh, bet on all the under or all the favorites uh, in Week One. Um, you know, you can't run on the Saints. They got Lattimore on the outside. You can't really throw uh, outside. Drake London's you know banged up a little bit, but uh, I'm taking the Falcons. You know, they won seven games last year. I believe in Arthur Smith uh, as an offensive mind, and uh, I think the Saints are going to be good. But it might take them a little bit of time uh, to figure it out. You know, no Sean Payton. Uh, three receivers that didn't play last year are going to be their top three wideouts. So I'm taking the home underdog and just hoping they keep it competitive. Uh, I'm going to go to you here. I know you're a big Saints guy. I, I don't have a strong lean uh, on this game, honestly. I, I probably side more uh, with Derek, but it scares the shit out of me to bet the Falcons here. I mean, they're, they're not a great team here. I like the Saints here. I think this one will be competitive. Maybe New Orleans pulls away at the end, but this certainly not a best bet for me, Chop. Are you on the New Orleans side here? Or are you siding with Derek and the Falcons? Good question. I, I really want to pull the trigger on the Saints here being a best bet. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> but, man, we've, we've already kind of talked about it a little bit is, uh, you know, if you keep on loading up on road favorites, you're probably not going to do that well long run. But, boy, I feel good about the Saints this year. Mm. Yeah, they go ahead, man. Give me, give me this. Chalk me up. Give me the Saints. Best All bet. Right. Give me that. Yeah, I'll take that one. I just, I feel like the Saints are in for just a, a really good year. They got a good, solid defense. Like they traded away their uh, slot slash nickel cornerback a couple weeks ago to Philly for almost nothing, and they did that not I, like big picture, not because they didn't want to pay him right now or what. They did that because they feel pretty comfortable with. Their defense is that good and that deep that they can get rid of a quality guy like that and still feel good. I think the defense is going to be good. Jameis back finally has some weapons. I'm scared of Arthur Smith. I am. I think Mariota could still be a decent quarterback in the NFL, but I like the Saints, man. I might as well jump on because if they go out and they start steamrolling people, I'll never get a good spread like this again. So do it. All right, getting on board early, locking in a best bet for Chop with the New Orleans Saints, minus five and a half. All right, next game, we got New England traveling to Miami. Dolphins uh, opened up minus two and a half. This has crossed one of the key numbers and is now minus three and a half. And we know New England has not played well here, especially early in the season. I heard they went in early to try to get acclimated 
uh, to the heat here. So three and a half on the spread. Total sitting at 46 here at BetMGM. So, Chop, New England, you're hearing a lot of things. It could be good. I'm hearing a lot of pessimistic things as well that, that this is going to be the year that kind of fall on their face. Other side, a lot of excitement around this Miami team. I mean, they go out and they get Tyree Kill. They go out and sign Chase Edmonds. A Tua, we'll see. Can he support these wide receivers and this offense here? What do you got in this one? AFC East battle, Patriots and Dolphins. Back to back. Going back to back, best bets here, man. Number two on the board for me. Give me the Miami Dolphins. Love it. You got uh, the Patriots, I think, are just, I've said it a, a multiple times throughout the offseason. I think they're in for a bad year this year. I think the offense is going to be really bad. Uh, because of that, the Dolphins have pretty much had their number anyway. Even when the Dolphins have been bad these last few years, they've played New England really tough. They're the superior team right now, talent wise. I like I like Miami here to roll. They got the weapons, like you said. Everybody's talking about Tyreek and and Waddle and Tua lighting it up. I wouldn't be surprised if we sit back and watch Raheem Mostert go for uh, 150 yards in this game before he gets injured, of course, and then that, that'll be it for the year. But point being, I think they I think they are going to have an explosive offense, and I don't think New England can match them. So taking Miami here. All right, I like it. They didn't quite make the, the chopping block for me, a pun intended here, on, on the best bets, but they were certainly in the equation. I, I'm with you on Miami here. Uh, love the spot for him against New England. Uh, Chase Edmonds, a guy I'm a big fan of. He's pretty cheap out there uh, in DFS land, 5,200 on DraftKings. So I, just, I think Miami's underrated. I, I think they're going to be a playoff contender. I think we start to see New England take a step back here. Uh, that offense, we'll see. A lot of questions there. So uh, I, I was perusing around scores and odds earlier, so I already know uh, where our boy Notorious is going here. He's pretty bullish uh, on Miami, but he says, hell, we don't need the three and a half. I'm ready to bet some alternate lines here. So, uh, Noto, what do we got here? I know you like the Dolphins. How high are you willing to go on that spread? Yeah, I mean, the difference between three and a half and six and a half uh, doesn't seem that big to me. So uh, you're getting much better odds if you do want to take that uh, alternate line with me. But, yeah, uh, one of my five best bets as well. For me, it's just about the Patriots. I don't think their offense is going to be very good. Um, if the Dolphins can stop the run, uh, I think they should run away with this one. I mean, they have two guys calling plays. Uh, one of them is Matt Patricia, who's been on the defensive side of the ball since 2006. So, uh, yeah, I don't trust this offense. Uh, give me the Dolphins and feel pretty good about this one. This one sitting at betting-wise, let's see. We got 66% of the bets on Miami right now, 70% of the money. So uh, kind of in line with, with what we thought. Uh, you two locking it as a best bet right on the fringe for me. I do like Miami. Uh, so a clean sweep here for us on the Dolphins. All right, next game, Cleveland and Carolina. Baker Mayfield, a revenge game here. Uh, this one started at Cleveland. Minus three and a half. That has changed dramatically, obviously, in favor of the Carolina Panthers. They sit at minus one and a half here at BetMGM total. Uh, way down there. One of the lower totals we have on the board uh, at 41 and a half. So uh, I have some thoughts on this game, Derek. In fact, I have a best bet on this game, but I'm going to toss it uh, to you here. We get Baker Mayfield back. We get Christian McCaffrey back. Cleveland side, obviously, we know going to be the Jacoby Brissett show here for the first 11 weeks of the season so could be an ugly game here brown's gonna run the ball gonna play good defense can carolina do enough can carolina get the w here at home so i'm extremely high on christian mccaffrey uh this season as as well as week one dfs but after that i mean i don't trust anyone on carolina i know it's a revenge game for baker but i could see him forcing the issue here the Browns have the better offensive line. Browns have the better defensive line. They're better on defense as a whole. And, uh, yeah, so there's so many good running backs on this team. I know Brissett isn't a guy that we want to trust, but I think he's going to be fine. I think he'll limit his turnovers. So uh, give me the Browns as uh, road underdogs. All right. Noto going against one of my best bets here, Chop. I love the <laughs> Panthers here uh, in this spot. and It's a team that you get excited about, like Derek said. We love McCaffrey. We love DJ Moore. They, they tend to let you down, though. I do think Baker's going to be more than serviceable. You know, I know there's a lot of hate out there on Baker Mayfield, but I think the guy can play. J Jacoby Brissett, to me, cannot play. So the points are valid, Derek. They're definitely going to run the ball. They definitely have a very good defense here. I just don't know if they're going to be able to score enough points here. Uh, even in an ugly game, I think Carolina could squeak one out, say 20-17. to 17. So 
Chop, I'm locking in the Panthers uh, as a best bet here. Am I crazy? No. Uh, if I didn't do two best bets in a row, I probably might even think about Panthers myself. I think that uh, there's a reason why this thing is moving so much in the favor of uh, Carolina. Jo Jacoby Brissett could very well go out there and just, like, not be – very not not just terrible like he wasn't terrible. he wasn't setting the world on fire last year when he had to fill in i think it was miami last year wherever he was that he had to come in for a few games and and play he's never really been that good so yeah uh on the flip side i'm with you i've said it i said it last week i think baker a guy like baker sometimes gets a bad rap because he's in a bad situation to start his career he's probably not that bad at all we're gonna find out so you know, if they if they can stop Nick Chubb, they're gonna win this game going away. I, I do kind of worry about that a little bit, but you know, we'll see how that plays out. But I'm with you. I like Carolina. Just I, I can't push another best bet just yet. I gotta let some games flow here for a minute. You gotta keep some bullets in the chamber. Yeah, Bob. you can't can't just come out here firing all the bullets and, and have eight games left. So, uh, seventy eight percent of the bets on Carolina, ninety three percent of the money right now. So. Uh, a lot of people on the side of Carolina. Again, not necessarily uh, the side I want to be on as far as the public goes, but I do think Carolina gets the W here uh, at home. Next game, Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. This one's kind of stayed static. Uh, stayed at six and a half, uh, which is where it opened. That's where it stays here at BetMGM. Total at 44 and a half. So uh, Chop Cincinnati coming off a magical ride to the Super Bowl. I, nobody saw that coming. This offense loaded up. They've added some pieces on the line to certainly help out. Pittsburgh, on the other hand, brand new team. No more Ben Roethlisberger here. They will be led by Mitchell Trubisky on that side of the ball. So uh, an AFC North battle here to start us off, Chop. Feels like the sports books want you to step into that Cincinnati. Minus six and a half. It's under that seven. What are you doing here, Steelers and Bengals? Yeah, I'd feel a lot better as, as a guy who likes Pittsburgh. I'd feel a lot better if they had thrown that seven out there instead of the six and a half, but they didn't. And I think, you know, they probably did it for a reason. So I kind of like uh, the Steelers here. I actually do like the Steelers here. I think, I think the Bengals are just a, just a bit overvalued this year based on a playoff run. I, they're still good. They probably did improve maybe, uh, but the Steelers I know improved. I know they got better because they couldn't get much worse than the quarterback they had last year. No offense to him, great career, but he just couldn't get the ball downfield anymore these last couple of years. Trubisky went out there, beat out a first-round pick for the starting job. He's another guy we just talked about, Baker. I think Trubisky, there's a chance he gets in the right situation. He may be still be a good NFL quarterback. We don't really know. He was stuck with Matt Nagy and those guys for so long. Like, what are you going to do, man? So – I like the Steelers here. I think I think the Steelers uh, could end up coming in here and making this a lot tighter than the six and a half point spread. I'm kind of torn on this one. I, I lean the Bengals. It's not a best bet for me. I, I certainly get what you're saying about the Steelers. I, I just don't know the Mitchell Trubisky, and he might not. You know, he may be better than than what we saw of Ben Roethlisberger. I mean, it, it's still a question mark. You got the injury to Najee Harris is a question mark. So. Uh, that offensive line is not great at all. So Cincinnati's going to be able to, to get some pressure on. I like their defense this week. So uh, I'm torn here as far as a bet goes. So I'm not locking in a best bet. A small lean towards the Bengals. Derek, your thoughts here, Steelers and Cincinnati. Yeah, locking in my second best bet with Cincy. Uh, I hate to go against Chop in this one. Oh, Look, for me, the Steelers, uh, they're good in two areas. Their receivers are very good, and they have a good defensive line. Uh, Cincinnati, they bolstered their offensive line. Um, they're the most improved unit in terms of, uh, you know, PFF has them as a top 10 offensive line, uh, you know, projected for this season. And then uh, their offensive line, the, the Steelers, just not very good. So I think I do think they're going to get pressure on Trubisky. Uh, I, don't, I don't trust Trubisky. I've already bet on two, uh, you know, backup quarterbacks in Mariota and – uh, percent. So I can't take a third. Give me the Bengals. All right. Betting numbers here is about 60, 40, uh, coming in on the Bengals right now, 60% uh, of the bets, 54% uh, of the money. Next game, San Francisco, uh, and Trey Lance, uh, been one of the hot topics uh, all season long. They are seven point favorites. That's up from the six and a half at open, uh, total on this one sitting at 40 and a half here. Uh, at bed MGM. So Derek, another low, ugly total here. We hammered on the bears last week. I mean, we, we all kind of said 
this is an under. San Francisco's got to be one of the favorites uh, in the NFC. So seven feels a little bit light to me. I'm locking in the Niners here uh, as a best bet. I know Lance is a concern. I think he's going to answer a lot of those questions. And even if he's subpar, Spares defense is not what it was in the past. So I think they'll be able to run the ball a lot. Their defense is going to be dominant in this one. I don't know where the points are going to come from, from Chicago. I know Fields had a good game against them last season. He's going to have to be magical to keep this game close. Honestly, Derek, this is what I want to, the old ladder bet, you know, get out the minus 14s. I think San Francisco rolls here 35 to seven, something along those lines. So love the Niners in this spot. I'm locking them in as a best bet. Your thoughts. Yeah, I was going to say my hot take for the week is the Niners defense scores more points than the Bears offense. Um, I think it's going to be pretty ugly. Um, but look, one of these uh, big home favorites are probably going to win. Uh, we're going to look back and be like, oh, I can't believe we locked in that seven point road favorite. But I don't think it's going to be the Bears. Uh, you know, Trey Lance, he was one of the more polarizing guys in redraft leagues uh, this summer. He Everybody wanted him. And then they re-signed Garoppolo. He didn't look great in camp. And now nobody wants him. I think he's going to be fine. I think his ceiling's still there. So, yeah, I'm with you. Give me the Niners. Chop, taking the home dog here. You're locking in the Bears. Best bet here, or are you with us on the Niners? Best bet alert. Give me the Niners, man. That's, that's, there you go. That's crazy. It's crazy. That, 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 that's last year we used to say when we all three locked into a, a game, it was a parlay, piece of a parlay. But this is even, this is even a, bigger, a bigger outcome because this is a, all three locking into a best bet. That's a big deal right there. No, I'm with you. Like, where are the Bears? I, uh, their strength on offense might be to run the ball this year. You're not going to run into the teeth of the 49ers defense. They didn't give Justin Fields any weapons, notable weapons to work with. Uh, he's he's in the same range that uh, Jameis Winston was in last year with these wide receivers. They're just, you know, your, your number one wide receiver is probably really like a number three or a number four in the NFL, a number three at the best. Yeah, and Trey Lance may or may not be good. We don't know, but he's probably good enough to scramble around, run for some yards, and get you close to the goal line. You got Debo. Like, yeah, just, just too much. I just don't know where the points are going to come from for the, for the Bears. So got to lock in the Niners here. That, like I said, that's the worry. I mean, San Francisco is the more dominant team on both sides of the ball, even if the offense struggles and they win – 20 to 20 to 10, whatever it is. I don't see the Bears scoring more than 10, 13 points in this game. So uh, love the Niners. Uh, can load up on them in DFS uh, as well. Defense included. Uh, Niners uh, locked in for Chop and I uh, as best bets. All right, Chop, you ready to chew on some kneecaps and, and get into some hard knocks here? Dan Campbell and the Lions hosting the Philadelphia Eagles. This one started out at Eagles minus three and a half. That has ticked up to four. Total up at 48 and a half here at Bet MGM. So are we buying the Lions Kool-Aid? I mean, they were good to you last year. If you bet them, they were competitive. They covered a lot of spreads here. They certainly did not against Philadelphia. It was a 44 to 6, I want to say, uh, last time these two teams met in Ford Field. But it's opening night in Detroit. The tickets are sold out for the first time since 2017 for a non-Thanksgiving game. Everyone's buying in here locally. I live in the area. They're drinking the Honolulu Kool-Aid. Chop, what are we doing here? This, to me, seems like a mismatch. I think the Lions offense will be able to do some. I don't mind an overplay in this one, to be honest with you. But I don't know if they're going to be able to stop Philly enough defensively, and that is the concern here. So love the over. Lean to Philly here. Chop, what do you got? Yeah, it's crazy that we're this far into it and we've seen this many road favorites over yeah. a field goal. It's nope. It's a little bit eye, eye popping here, but you know, I think the Eagles end up rolling them here. I'm not going to use it as like any best bet because it's four, man. You just don't, I, I'd be trusting Jalen Hurts to cover a four point spread on the road. I don't want to do that. And I do think that the Lions are going to be competitive this year. I do think they're going to build on last year. I think they have some pieces there, but I, I do believe that the Eagles are going to be a really tough team in the regular season on everybody they play. So uh, I think the Eagles end up winning this game and, and maybe covering that spread. I'm not going to use it as a best bet, but if I was going to lean, I'd be leaning Eagles here. I think the defensive line is is really tough, and the offensive line is going to maul the Detroit defensive line. They're just really built. The Eagles are really built well here this year. 
Yeah, 46% of the bets right now uh, on the Lions, but 63% of the money. So, no, no, a lot of people buying in to this team. Are you one of them? Are they going to cover these four points? Are they going to win the game? Getting on that money line, or is Philadelphia rolling? Oh, man, I'm resisting the urge to bet on the Lions. Watch those last two episodes of Hard Knocks. Man, got fired up. Um, that was one of the better seasons I can remember. So, Dan Campbell, love the dude. Going to be uh, cheering for the Lions this year, but – Hey, you guys mentioned the defensive line of the of the Eagles, the offensive line of the Eagles, and they brought in James Bradbury, uh, and they also, you know, traded for Gardner Johnson. So I, I love this team. I think they're going to win the division. So yeah, give me the Eagles as well. All right, a clean sweep for the Eagles. We move on to Indy and Houston, still in the early window of games. Should be a fun early slate here. Colts minus seven. That is down from the seven and a half. At opening here and the total at 45 and a half. Derek, we'll stay with you here. I mean, clearly, that's one of mismatch. Indy, one of the better teams in the AFC. Houston, the t- one of the bottom dwellers. Uh, I, I think there's some optimism here uh, with this Houston team, but we'll, we'll see how it goes here in week one. I have a best bet teed up for this game, locked in, but I want to get your guys' thoughts here before I throw it out there. So, Derek, your thoughts here? Another big road favorite with the Colts traveling to Houston. I believe the combined scores from the two games from these two teams last year was 63-3. to three. Um, Jonathan Taylor had, I don't know, 300 yards rushing, something like that. Um, and I think, I mean, I don't think the Texans did enough to slow him down in this one. So love Jonathan Taylor, DFS. I think the Colts are going to roll. I think they're going to be better with Matt Ryan under center. I think the Texans will be better a little bit, but um, it's hard for me to bet on them week one. So uh, until they prove it, I'm going to keep betting against them. All right, Indy for Derek. Chop, what do we got here? Big road favorite once again, kind of the theme of the week here, Colts and Texans. Almost the same thoughts as Derek. I, I like the Colts here. Um, I'm, I don't want to lay like seven on the road again. It's a bit much right now, so I'm – I'm going to hold off on that one. Maybe I'll circle back and put it, put it as best bet later, but I like the Colts. I think they are – I think tech, the Texans improved from last year, but like Derek said, two big blowouts last year to this team. This team really owns Houston right now, and the Colts got better. Yes, the Texans may have got better a little bit. The Colts got way better, I think. So I, I, I pencil in the Colts right here. That's a bunch of nonsense. <laughs> I'm going with the Texans, baby. Oh, Give me his set at home okay. for a best bet. I mean, I yes, you got all the points you made are valid. If you look at this game, Indy, the much better team, but we've seen this team go on the road and really disappoint. The easiest example to remember that last week in Jacksonville, where they go, you know, and they and they crap the bed there when they got everything on the line. And I know it's a different team, different quarterback. They've made the adjustments. I think Houston is one of those teams. That is going to surprise people. I'm not calling them a playoff team. I think they're going to be very gritty. They're going to be competitive. And a touchdown here at home, to me, is too high. And that's why you're starting to see this number come down a little bit. I am going out on the limb. Houston Texans as a best bet catching the points here at home. Maybe I've lost my damn mind, but we are locking in the Texans. Next game for us, Jacksonville. We got Derek's team up here. Traveling to Washington, uh, come down a little bit. This one traveled through a key number. Open up Washington minus three and a half. That is down to two and a half now. A uh, total at 43 and a half uh, for this one. So we'll get to Derek and his Jags here in a minute. But Chop, let's go to you here. Kind of interesting. This line drops a little bit in favor of Jacksonville. I know there's some excitement on Jacksonville as well. Some of these teams, the Lions, the Jaguars, clearly myself with the Texans. Think these teams are going to be a little bit improved here. Washington bringing in Carson Wentz. Still got to see what that looks like. Antonio Gibson looks like he's in the driver's seat uh, as far as the running back position goes. How do you see this one playing out, Chuck? If I was going to bet on this game, and mind you, I am really in the middle of – I'm on the fence on all this this game in general. If I was going to bet, I'd say under because I I do think Jacksonville's offense – could be okay this year, but you're traveling on the road to Washington. That, that can't help you. Uh, that that can't, you know, be a good thing. So maybe their offense struggles a little bit. Washington's offense, I think, is going to be bad in general this year. Washington's defense could be pretty good, assuming they get some health back. Uh, so I'd go under as far as the spread itself. I have I really couldn't 
I'm totally on the fence with that one. I could see Jacksonville coming in winning this game. I could see Washington winning this game by a touchdown. It's, so if I was going to lean anything, I'd lean the under. I'm staying away from this one. This is one of those. I don't want it. I don't want anything to do with this game. Like you said, Chop, Washington could dominate on the strength of that defense. We don't know what that offense is going to look like. We're all expecting it to be ugly. Who knows? Maybe Carson Wentz comes in, puts some numbers on the board. Other side, we have expectations for Jacksonville. Maybe it looks a lot like last season. I know they got ETN in there. We're expecting it to be different here. Let's go to our resident Jacksonville Jaguars expert here. Usually pessimistic about his team, but uh, Derek, what are you doing with your Jags here in week one? Hey, new season, new me. Uh, let's go, oh, Jags. There we go. Uh, there we go. <laughs> well, let's fire up the best bet. Uh, Jags oh. plus two and a half. Uh, right. So, look, I don't have that much faith in Washington's defense. Uh, I'm going to call them the football team. I don't, I'm not going to call them the commanders. Uh, Chase Young is out for the first four weeks. The secondary was very beatable last year. Uh, I think Lawrence is going to improve. Really like Christian Kirk, especially in DFS. And, uh, yeah, I mean, hey, get rid of Urban Meyer. Nothing can go. Can't be any worse. So, yeah, give me uh, my team. It's one of my best bets. And when they fail me, uh, I can root against them next week. There you go. So they are getting some. I mean, they're they're dominating the betting right now. 65% of the bets, uh, 88% of the money. So a lot of uh, people looking at the Jags here. Best bet for Derek Jacksonville. Plus the two and a half. All right, moving on to the late window. This we got some great games coming up here. Uh, headlined by this one, Kansas City and Arizona. Now, a lot of line movement uh, in this game. Opened at two and a half. All the way up to Kansas City minus six here at BetMGM. Total at 53 and a half, Derek. So, I mean, trying to who are the major in? We know Zach Ertz is questionable. Arizona obviously going to be out without DeAndre Hopkins here for the first six weeks of the season. You got the Chiefs coming in, but for a line to move three and a half points, that, that is some massive line movement. So are you buying in? Has the number gone too far? What are we doing here, Kansas City and Arizona? Yeah, it's funny because I was looking at the lines like a week ago and then pulled them up yesterday and saw it was a six. And I was like, what injury did I miss? Is, uh, you know, <laughs> is, is – uh, quarterback guy whatever but uh no uh for whatever reason i think everybody's just betting kc and uh, i was reading some stuff today um the cardinals love to the blitz uh they're one of the more blitz happy teams in the league and mahomes just tears up the blitz so i think that certainly helps i'm actually buying into his receivers i think juju could be interesting mbs you know kelsey's always going to be good so yeah give me the chiefs on the road man i'm taking way too many road favorites but give me another one all right, Chop, let's get to you. My quick thoughts. Here's another one. I, I'm not locking in a best bet. If anything, I do like the over in this one. I, I think we're going to get points here. Two very good offenses here. Two teams that could certainly lock it down on defense. You know, it's not going to be a, a 80 point to over, but I do think we get scoring in this one. As far as that spread goes, what do you think of this line movement? Are you buying it? Has it gone too far? What do you got here, Chiefs and Cardinals? Yeah, just looking at the line movement tool right there on uh, on scores and odds, it doesn't look like there was one drastic jump. It looks like uh, just kind of a steady movement up to six, which is tells me there's just a lot of people on the Chiefs, and I don't think I agree with that. I don't think I want the Cardinals, but I'm with you. I think I like the over. I don't think I want a side here. I think I'd rather have the over in this game if I had to pick. Uh, yeah another six point favored on the road and the Crazy. Cardinals are supposed to be pretty good. I'm not, I'm not, I can't mess with that. I think uh, no Hopkins is, is rough, but they did bring in Marquise Brown. Like there's a connection there with Kyler Murray, Marquise Brown. He may be even better than Hopkins in this system for all we know. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go and take a six point, uh, road favorite here. Not, not knowing what's going and And Mahomes, people forget for about two thirds of the season last year, Mahomes didn't look very good, and there was questions. Like for the first time in three years, we we're questioning: Is he really the best quarterback in the NFL? There's other guys who've caught up to him, and now all of a sudden, you know, he had some great playoff games and erased the memory. But what if the loss of Tyreek is more massive than we know? I can't take a side here, but I'll go with the over because uh, you know, I, you know, I always like to sit back and watch a game and, and root for some points. Yep, no doubt. 60% of the bets on the Chiefs makes sense. Uh, with that line movement, 72% of the money. Let's move on uh, to another one. Should be fun. We get to get this AFC West going. There's going to be a lot of fun games uh, in this division. And we get Raiders 
and Chargers here in this one. Open at Chargers minus four. That is down to three and a half here. A big total on this one as well, 52 and a half. So, Chop, we'll stay with you here. Obviously, Vegas goes out, brings in Devontae Adams to try to keep pace here uh, in this division. The Chargers continue to beef up that defense, get Derwin James back, bring in Khalil Mack. So, uh, what do we got here? We're going to see a lot of shootouts here uh, in the AFC West. This is another one I like the over, and I don't always like these 50 point overs, but th these two teams are going to score points. The Raiders defensively leave a lot to be desired. The Chargers certainly have some strength there, but they can melt down as well. I'm going to stay away from the spread. I'm going to go another over here on this one. Your thoughts here, Raiders and Chargers. Yeah, I'm, uh, this is, you know, they threw that hook in there. Otherwise, yeah. I'd probably be on the Chargers. But when you throw that hook in there in a kind of a – it's a rivalry game. They've always played each other, each other pretty tough. Uh, it was that that last week of the yeah. season last year where that crazy game went down to the field goal. They just play each other tough. Raiders made some pretty good improvements this season. I can't touch, I can't touch it. Uh, I can't lean heavy on anything. I'd go Chargers, you know. If I had to, I'd go Chargers, but I'm with you. I think there are points in this game. So, uh, but I, I'd lean Chargers. I don't have a really heavy feel there. I think it's a good rivalry game. Yeah, it should be fun, no doubt. And this is one in DFS. You know, you're, you're going to stack this one up every which way you can. The afternoon slate, a lot of options uh, to play in this one. Derek, any, any stronger of a lean here? Chop and I are both kind of staying away from that spread, both kind of like the over. Uh, in this one, what do you got here, Raiders and Chargers? Yeah, I'll go with the Chargers as uh, another one of my best bets. For me, Justin Herbert and the offense, I think they're a top five offense in the league. I think uh, with Derwin James, Joey Bosa, I think it's a top five defense in the league. And look, the Raiders got better for sure. They brought in Devontae Adams, but uh, they were incredibly lucky last year. Negative 65 point differential. Um, if you look at the other player or teams around them in the standings, uh, they should have been well below 500. So I think they're going to have to play better just to get, you know, eight or nine wins. Um, and, yeah, I, I like the Chargers a lot. This is a revenge game. Uh, they knocked them out of the, the playoffs last year. So I'm buying the hype early on the Chargers. And uh, maybe this is just a little biased because I did bet them to win the Super Bowl. There you go. We, we had some big thoughts on the Chargers. Again, go back to uh, last week's pod, and we talked a lot about futures and Super Bowl bets, things like that. I think we were all pretty high on, on the Chargers. So, uh, betting about split on this one, about 50, 50, uh, 68% of the money though, riding on the Raiders. As of now, this is constantly changing again. You can find all this great information at scores and odds. If you have not checked that out, uh, you're doing yourself a disservice. So much information in there. Uh, go and check that out as soon as you are done uh, with this show. All right. A best bet coming up for me in this one. Again, I'll keep it in my pocket. It is my green Bay Packers traveling to Minnesota opened at one and a half continues to be Green Bay minus one and a half total at 47 so Derek we'll stay with you we talked about Devontae Adams leaving the Raiders leaves a big gap here with Green Bay obviously uh, Alan Lazard questionable so no idea what that receiving core is going to look like the strength of this team which we talked about last week going to be the defense going to be that running game led by Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon other side new head coach new philosophy sounds like they're going to be throwing the ball a lot more. You get Dalvin Cook back, Justin Jefferson coming off another amazing season, and everyone's favorite quarterback, Kirk Cousins here. What are we doing here, Vikings and Packers here in the NFC North? Can't wait to watch this one. I don't have a strong take on the spread at all, uh, but you mentioned a new coach, Kevin O'Connell, coming over from the Rams. They want to play at a faster pace. They want to be more aggressive offensively. So I think Minnesota is going to put up some points and, you know, Green Bay wants to run the ball. They're going to be very effective running the ball, but they can also score. Uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers is always going to be able to put up points. So my favorite bet in this game is the over. All right, Chop, let's get to you. Packers, Vikings should be interesting. Always a battle between these two teams. What are we doing here? I want, I want to take the Packers here. I'm going to, I'm going to take the Packers for the bet. I'm not going to do a best bet. I would like to, but there's just too many unknowns here. You know, there's just uh, the receiving core for Green Bay. How much is that going to stifle, you know, this offense? Uh, maybe Devontae was huge. The Minnesota Newton, the coaching regime change, like this could be a really good head coach, a really good offensive-minded head coach coming. But how many times have we seen a guy come over under the tree of another coach and they're terrible, like, like, all the coaches Bill Belichick usually puts out of his tree are terrible. And like, 
who knows, this McVeigh tree might be terrible. So there's just so many unknowns, man. I'm not going to touch it, but, man, my lean is the Packers here. The McVeigh tree has been pretty solid here. I mean, Bat LaFleur, uh, the dude yeah. in Cincinnati, I can't, Zach Taylor. So, so far, so good. So I told you I'm going to give you a best bet. I mean, come on, I'm a Packer fan. I, I got to be a homer here. But that is not what we're going to do. Locking Ooh. in the Minnesota Whoa. Vikings at home as a best bet. I hate to go against my team, but I do think it's going to be a struggle early on in the season with these young wide receivers. I think Minnesota is going to surprise some people, contend, and potentially win this division here. Going into Minnesota is never an easy task for this Green Bay team, and I think they're going to come up short in this one. As much as I hate to say it, I am locking in the Minnesota Vikings at home as a best bet, plus one and a half. And grab the money line if you don't want to mess with that one and a half. Give me the Vikings here over my Green Bay Packers. All right, next game, the New York Giants traveling to Tennessee to take on the Titans. Opened up Tennessee minus six and a half. That has down to five and a half total here at BetMGM, sitting at 43 and a half. So, Chop, we'll stay with you. I mean, the Giants, one of those teams, if you've done best ball drafts, you get all excited about, you know, Saquon Barkley's moving up the charts, and this is the year Daniel Jones is going to figure it out. They bring in Brian Dable. They clear out the old regime. Ton of receivers that you can like. Kadarius Toney, Wandale Robinson, and you got Tennessee, a team that I think we all agree overachieved last season. You know, number one seed in the AFC and uh, just kind of ducked out of the playoffs uh, without doing much of anything here. But at home, Derrick Henry, good matchup here. Chop, what are you doing with this one? Titans and Giants. We're down to three games left. Yeah, you got a couple bullets left to, by got my count. You bullets. still got two bullets to and fire. This, and I'm saving one for this game right here. Best bet alert for me in this game. Give me the home favorite. All righty. Tennessee Titans. Uh, you know, there's just I know I know their their coaching is better this year for the Giants, but is the quarterback play going to be that much better? I don't know. You know, is the defense going to be better? I don't think so. So uh, Tennessee, they do over it. You say overachieve. I say they're just a really good, sound, regular season team. they got a head coach who can just steal you points in the regular season, which helps. All right, he makes good decisions. He makes bold decisions. And he, he does things, uh, Mike Brabel, that, that helps get you points in the regular. Now, some of that stuff hasn't translated to the postseason, but that's okay. We're in, we're in the regular season here. I just need him to cover this five and a half. And uh, I think, like you said, a healthy Derrick Henry would go a long ways here. They keep talking about A.J. Brown being gone, but, you know, I'm curious to see if Robert Woods can step in and be decent at some point. Or uh, this whole Traylon Burks thing might be a little bit overblown. It might not be. Who cares? Kyle, Kyle Phillips might be good. I th the point is I think Vrabel will make it happen because everything's going to center around Derrick Henry anyway. What better week to get Derrick Henry than week one when you know he's fresh and you know he's good? The Giants, there's too many unknowns. The defense may take a step backwards. And that can't help on the road against against this running game. So I take the Titans here, man, because I think they can do some damage in the regular season. That's my lean as well. I just have so many questions about both of these teams. I mean, what is Tennessee going to come out and look? We know they're going to give the ball to Derrick Henry 700 times, but what does the rest of the offense look like? What does that defense look like? My main questions, Derrick, are on the Giants' side. I mean, is it the same disaster that we have seen – year in and year out, or have they finally put it together? Did they bring in the right coach? Getting Barkley back, is that going to be a help? I don't want to bet on that. I'm interested to see how it plays out. I certainly have a lot of fantasy stock in this in my best ball portfolio, but I'm staying away from this one. Are you as bullish as Chop here on Tennessee? Are you staying away from this one? Are you rolling with the Giants plus the points? I absolutely hate this game. Uh, just like you, I don't know what to do with either of these teams. Uh, I do expect the Titans to take a step back this year, but you can run on the Giants, and Derrick Henry is going to run on the Giants. Uh, Brian Dable, I think he's a great hire. I think he's going to be good for the team in the long run, but I do think it could take some time. Uh, you never really know what to expect with these receivers. I mean, Kenny Galladay just uh, looking like a mannequin out there, uh, reports were saying. <laughs> Uh, Kadarius Tony is supposed to be playing. Shepard's supposed to be playing. Uh, who knows? But, uh, yeah, I like Barkley and Henry for DFS, but I don't really have a strong take. I would take the Titans if forced uh, to make a pick in this one. Shit, pay me some money. I'll go out there and look like a mannequin. You ain't, ain't got to pay Kenny Galladay all that money. I, I can do that at a much cheaper price. What happened? Like, the last 
thing we had really heard from Galladay, like he was in, he was a stud with Stafford as his quarter. Then all of a sudden he signs the contract. And he's still he was still a that's young guy. That's what happened. <laughs> Same that's with what, that, Robbie yeah. Anderson. Yep. I mean, he just, paid and that's it. Know, it's crazy, but he yeah, he just fell off the he was supposed he was like one of the up and coming best wide receivers in the NFL, we thought. And then this. Maybe it's the Daniel Jones effect. Well, I'm kind of hoping he gets dusted aside. I'd love to see Kadarius Tony, Wandale Robinson, Sterling Shepard, and see what that offense looks like uh, with all these little water bugs uh, at the athletes running around. So uh, we'll see. I don't think Kenny Golly going to make it uh, very far into the year. All right, let's get to Sunday night football. We're going to try to cover uh, each and every game here this season, including Sunday night football, Monday night football, Thursday night football, cover you uh, from all aspects here. So we got Chops team. Up here, Dallas at home against Tampa Bay. Opened up Tampa Bay minus two. That is up to two and a half now. This total at 50 and a half. So, Chop, you got one bullet left here. Are are you using it on your Cowboys? Are you shooting your Cowboys in the head uh, with old Noodle Arm, your favorite quarterback here? What are we doing here, Tampa Bay and Dallas? Yeah, I know all about the Cowboys. I'm very well versed on this game. I know exactly what's going to happen. And that's why I'm going to defer my pick to the next game. I'm not touching this one. I'm not touching this total. I'm not touching this spread. I have, if I was going to lean, I'd lean Cowboys, but I have, I, I would, that's just so far, you know, I'm not polarized either way on that one. I think, I really think Tampa Bay is going to struggle with uh, a banged up offensive line. I think life is going to be a lot tougher for Tom Brady than it has been since his last year in New England, where we were all looking going, ah, he's washed. Now, then he got behind a really good offensive line with some really good wide receivers and, you know, went, won a Super Bowl. This offensive line isn't that, and these receivers aren't that. Godwin is, and he tore his knee late last year. How much can he really return here and how effective can he be early? So, and then the Cowboys, I've been on record to say I really think that they're okay with letting the chips fall where they may this year. We're not going to go out and we're not going to splurge on any free agent or any, if we happen to uh, catch lightning in a bottle and win a bunch of games and grab a number one or two seed, that's great. But otherwise, we're okay with losing some games, getting McCarthy out of here, getting Sean Payton in and spending some of that money next year instead of this year. So I have no lean on this game at all. I'm with you. This may be the one with the most question marks, and it's mainly the health of both offensive lines. You know, they're both banged up. They're both missing key pieces here. What is that going to look like? You mentioned Godwin. He's banged up. Dallas, who knows who's going to play wide receiver for them? Is Zeke going to be eating or, or not? I mean, it, there's a lot of questions here uh, with this one, so I'll stay away from the bet here. I kind of like an under here, though, Derek, with both these offensive lines struggling. I, you're not, I don't know that you're going to get – a super shootout here like we saw i think believe this was the opening game of the season last year a back and forth very entertaining game i don't think we get that i think it's kind of ugly i'm gonna go under here your thoughts here tampa bay and dallas and by my count Derek, counting bullets here you still have one bullet remaining as well if i have things correct all right well that bullet's not going to either of the next two games um so i'll have to circle back on that one but Look, I have three big Cowboy fans in my home league. Our draft was last night. You wouldn't believe how fast uh, Dak and Schultz and CeeDee Lamb went off the board. I think Schultz was the second tight end pick. Wow. Oh, man. Just uh, wow. Just making it easy on just me. Just chopping but... it. Was a chop? You can you can name names here, Derek. Was he in the league with you? No, unfortunately not. But the thing was, the Cowboys always find a way to let down their fans. But not in week one. They're going to play well uh, for a little while. So if I'm forced to make a pick, I'll take the Cowboys. You guys mentioned the offensive line injuries with Tampa Bay and uh but for for the season long bets I like the unders on both of these teams all right let's wrap it up Monday night football obviously the headline Russell Wilson uh, with his new team the Denver Broncos traveling back to take on his former team the Seattle Seahawks a lot of line movement here uh, on this one started at Denver minus four all the way up to Denver minus six and a half here 44 and a half on the total Derek so you already kind of gave it away. Not not a best bet here, but how bullish are we here on, on Russell Wilson and the boys going back to take on Seattle, who we talked about last week, kind of in that conversation with Chicago as potentially one of the worst teams in all of football here. So how do you see this one playing out Monday Night Football? 
Wasn't it a chop strat- strategy last year where if you already took like four big favorites on the road, you might as well take five. Um, so I'll do that. Um, I, don't, I don't like the Seahawks at all. I don't think this is necessarily a revenge game for Seattle or for Russ. I think it's kind of, you know, the fans kind of still like him, and I think it'll be a nice homecoming for him. So uh, I will take the Broncos. Is that a best bet or you're circling back? I'm, I'm circling back. I had them written down, but. All right, yeah. maybe I missed one here. Uh, chop, one bullet remaining for you here. Uh, is it going to Russell Wilson and the boys returning to Seattle? I am not circling back. I'm loading up on this game. In fact, I'm double dipping on this one. This is my best bet and my survivor pool pick oh, right here. Week okay, one. okay. Give me the Denver Broncos. I know it's a road, but, I mean, we're looking. There's so many road favorites. It's hard to avoid it. It's hard to avoid, you know, finding a survivor pick this week that's, that's you know, not on the road because there's so many big road favorites. I just think that Seattle is uh, like Derek alluded to. I think they're really bad this year. I think they're awful. Uh, people forget the Denver defense was really on the incline last year. They, they, they've got some good secondary pieces. They've got some good pass rushers. I think they can get after this game. And I just think you get a good quarterback, like it's going to make all the difference in the world for those wide receivers. There's a ton of weapons. It's a decent offensive line. And, uh, you know, your, your bullet in the chamber if you're Denver is this kid, Javante Williams. He may be a dominator. So I think uh, just looking at the landscape of the NFL this week, it's tough to find. I mean, a survivor pick this week is really tough. Yeah. Uh, you want to, you know, you want to look at the schedule as a totality. But Denver at some point is going to get into conference play. And when they do, you can mark, there's no way you're taking survivors against the Chargers and those on the, those teams. So might as well knock them out now. Uh, I think it's fairly safe in my opinion, although who knows what's going to happen. But I'm locking in Denver best bet and Denver survivor pool Monday night. At least give me a sweat on Monday night. There you go. After the the week one DFS contests are in the book and we got to recoup a little bit or maybe you're sitting on a million already. Chop, you got Denver to cheer for uh, here. But it's it makes sense. We talked about last week, the AFC West. The schedule is brutal. I mean, not only the, the games in the division. A lot of their games outside of the division are, are going to be tough. So uh, when you can find these teams with a, I'll say easy win, but an easier win uh, certainly makes sense. So chop locking in Denver. We'll do a recap here of our picks here before uh, we get out of here, get you all of our best bets uh, here again, presented by BetMGM. Thank you to them uh, for sponsoring the show. Derek, you had the opportunity to circle back, take a look at all the games in their totality. Who is the fifth bullet for you here as a best bet? Let's go with Buffalo as the fifth bullet, and then I'm going to go with Cincinnati as my survivor. All right, Cincinnati. All right, so recap here. Make sure I got this right. Chop, best bets is rolling with the New Orleans Saints, the Miami Dolphins, San Francisco 49ers, the Tennessee Titans, and the Denver Broncos. Survivor pick is also Denver. Noto, rolling with Buffalo, Miami, Cincinnati, Jacksonville, And the Los Angeles Chargers uh, with a survivor pick on the Cincinnati Bengals. My picks, I got to find them here. Where'd they go? I'm going with, I lost them. Let's see here. Who'd I have? San Francisco, Houston, Minnesota. Uh, Let's find some other games here, Chop. Why can't I find them? (laughs) Buffalo, do you have Buffalo? Buffalo, yep. Need one more. Yeah, I don't know. Panthers? Did you say Panthers? You I did you say, say Panthers. I did say <laughs> Panthers. Yep, that's the five. And my survivor pick rolling with the San Francisco 49ers in that game in Chicago. So that'll do it, guys. Week one. Uh, excited, no doubt. So that's 15 best bets for you. Three survivor pool picks, some fantasy thoughts uh, along the way. Make sure you head over to BetMGM again. Promo code Grinders, thousand uh, dollars free bet if you want to take advantage of that. Support the show. Uh, we'd appreciate that. Sponsor would appreciate that. Guys, final thoughts for the people. Derek, what do you got? Uh, make sure to check out all the great uh, DFS content as well, and then uh, scores and odds. A lot of good bets up there already. I'm sure you know, there's going to be a ton coming in the next couple of days. Absolutely, Roto Grinders scores and odds. Make sure you are checking both of them out. Chop. Final thoughts. Week one, buddy. What do you got? 
Excited. Excited for week one. I'm glad, uh, you know, we've got a new format to the show. I feel good about it. And uh, maybe we'll make some money here. No, we're going to make some money. All right. So the contest begin. We're going to keep this under an hour. Thank you to BetMGM. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We'll be back next week. Good luck in week one. We are the DFS OGs. We are out.